Fuck I've never that. had a high C before, to be honest with you. You what? What? Yeah, I've hold never on, had a high C. Whoa, 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 whoa. Brother, You've what? never had high C before? Yeah. Uh, maybe like once when I was a real little kid, but I, I didn't know there were multiple flavors until this moment. Dude. All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome back here to Four Fly Guys, episode 19. Uh, before we get into kind of the nuts and bolts of everything, uh, we got a lot of good hockey stuff to talk over. Uh, but just a quick little update about the pod uh, going forward. Sam Stout, uh, he's not going to be part of Four Fly Guys. Uh, things are going to be a little different. Obviously, we're going to miss Sam. Uh, wish him nothing but the best. Um, but we do have Owen, and Owen's going to be kind of uh, in replace i think as of now we're gonna be doing some different things uh we'll probably be having some updates over the next couple of weeks and kind of what's going to be the future of the show but we're not ending it it's not dying or anything we're just making a couple changes that's all um so let's kind of get into this uh there's a lot of well not a ton to talk about uh we'll got some player grades later on that are going to be really fun uh ivan fedotov resigns with the flyers phantoms they got a calder cup uh, playoff matchup coming up, a couple of games. Uh, Jake Voracek, my favorite flyer. Did you see he's the fly guy drinking the nice beer that he was enjoying while he was uh, Hell yeah. talking with me in October? Uh, that was incredible. And then we got some questions at the end. Uh, so in his uh, debut episode as, as host, uh, I know he's been producer a little bit. We'll go go straight to Owen. What's up, brother? Uh, you know, no, nothing nothing much. Uh, it's good to, good to be here with you guys. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, we, as we mentioned, I'm um, just going to be filling in at least at least for now. Um, we're going to kind of evaluate what the best course of action is, whether to bring in you know somebody else's host or you know what happens going forward. Um, no matter what happens, I'm, you know a lot of really good things coming to the pod this summer, um, weeks coming up, and uh, yeah, to the moon. Yeah, hell yeah, my guy, my guy. How we uh, how do we feel about this kind of? Fedotov extension. I mean, I know we're kind of just may as well just jump right in. I mean, there's not a ton to talk yeah. about, but do we? Uh, I don't know. How do we, how do we feel? Two years, maybe a, a higher cap hit than we expected. What do we think? Yeah. I mean, I'm fine with it. Like, is it probably like a couple hundred thousand or something more than I expected, or maybe a million? Yeah, but I'm not gonna, you know, have a bird over over him getting a, you know a couple a little bit more money especially with like what he dealt with trying to get over here the first time like it doesn't shock me that maybe he might have got a little bit more i don't know if that's because of it or what but um you know i'm mean, look you know we'll, we'll obviously talk about him in the player grades um i don't know i mean i think there's there's some things with with fedotov that you can um not really go full into detail yet because he has only played three games and obviously we you know we mentioned that a little, a little bit later on so you know i mean w- when you look at you know fedotov and just more of of kind of where he's at and I, look i just think the contract wise it's two years i did it was rumored that the flyers wanted or uh his camp wanted more years and the flyers didn't want to do that right away which makes sense it's on the same yeah. timeline as urson and um, you know, same timeline as where the team is at. So, you know, see how these two years go. And if he's the goalie of the future, he's, you know, 29, 30 ish by then. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm not gonna, like, like I said, I'm not gonna have like have a bird about him getting, you know, 3.25 when he probably could have got maybe like two and a half or something. I just, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah. I think it's another thing. It's, it's a weird situation in that like how old he is and his performance in the KHL has been consistently good that we kind of just don't have anything to base it off of. Um, it's like, I don't, th- I think that's part of why some people have as much issue with it as they have in that when other goalies come over from these leagues, they haven't been proving themselves. They haven't proved themselves as long and consistently as Fedotov had in the KHL. So I think that's part of it. And like Chris said, like at that cap hit, if it's even if it's like entirely an overpay and if he's barely a backup, it's such a small percentage of the cap that I just 
I, I don't really care. And if that's what it took to yeah. get him over here and to get a potentially serviceable backup, because we didn't have one, right. then fine. I'm more than I fine just, with that. I think I'm in agreement with you. Like, I just genuinely don't give a shit that much to argue about the seven, the fucking 700,000 that he got paid extra. Like, it, yeah. it's just not that big of a deal to me. Like, I just, like, all right. You know, I like think I, this is something. I think this is something that was probably clearly negotiated a little bit before he even came over. Yeah, and I know Anthony yeah, DeMarco sure. kind of alluded to that today. I think in his report, um, for me, the most kind of staggering thing about it is not even the number within the contract; it's the number that he put up in the KHL. He in forty four games with Moscow, he had a nine fourteen save percentage, and that's immediately following a year off where he didn't even play because mm-hmm. of the military service. The fact that he came in and still performed at such a high level in what I would consider to be the best league outside the NHL for development other than the AHL, I think they're okay. you know, very close. I think cap. Yeah, I mean, we, we've talked about this before. I, I don't think the KHL is the second best league in the world, but continue. Yeah, I mean, I think the KHL and the AHL are very similar, but I do think it's slightly above. But regardless, I mean, it's still a very good league for him to, to kind of keep playing at and improve his game. And the fact that he put up those numbers for a competitive league like that, I think is impressive considering the time off three games over here, nothing special, but the team in front of him, you know, I mean, that was in the middle of the eight game losing streak, the horrific collapse two years is fine. I think they've been doing those bridge deals a lot with some of the guys who aren't fully established yet, but you know, that's kind of what happens in a rebuild when you want to solidify your core and you're not sure if certain guys are going to be a part of that. Coach. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess that could maybe play into it a little bit, but I, uh, yeah, I don't really have a problem with the term. Um, I had to get and, the weak money towards dig in there, Chris. Yeah, yep. of course. Of course he did. <laughs> the, uh, the money is, is also not really an issue. I mean, I think 3.25, it is what it is. An extra a hundred thousand, 700,000, whatever you were saying, you know, however much it is, it is what it is. I think the only thing that happens is, if you sign other guys to those types of deals, then it piles up and makes it harder to weaponize your cap space in a rebuilding situation. I think that could be the only downside, but for the most part, it's, I mean, it's, it's just a solid deal. Like I don't really have an issue with it. I don't know how anybody could. Uh, for those what I want to know is how does this impact Bobby Brink's legacy? Cause they still need to resign him. <laughs> Hell yeah. Start off on a high note. All right. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I think I'm willing to withhold judgment on this a little bit until we see, you know, a full, like, I'm excited to see Fedotov, you know, full off season with the team. Sorry, Fedotov, full off season with the team. Um, no, I said it too. I'm just being a dick. <laughs> uh, you know, like being able to being able to like get all the way through camp. Um, I mean, you mentioned great numbers in the KHL despite having all that time off. So I, I, I'm I'm really excited to see like a not rusty Fedotov um, playing for the Flyers. I, I can kind of see them kind of see him potentially splitting starts with Urson next season, rather than being in a in more of a backup role. I can see Urson being like a one A and him being a one B. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think, I think it's fine. Uh, it's a little bit more than I would like, but kind of like Chris said, I'm not going to, you know, lose my, yeah, head, I mean, lose any hair over it. Especially when that's they're what probably going to move on a ton of money this off season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. If, if that's what it took to get him here though, I mean, it's, it, it is what it is. Yeah. And it's only two years. Yeah. Like it's yeah. not, I just don't see why you couldn't have that as like a signing bonus being like, thanks for coming over. Here's like an extra. So it's funny you said that because I do believe his contract is actually broken in a lot of like bonuses at the front part of it. I think I'm not like entirely sure. I'd I'd seen something on that. I believe it was. was Don't uh, correct or correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm trying to pull it up now. I have the cap friendly up right now. Yeah, so he so has he has a performance bonus of one hundred seventy five thousand. Um, the amount of players. Yeah, so it's it's, it's two and a, it's, it's it's actually seven seventy five in uh, his salary, but it's it's two two and a half million in bonuses for the yeah, two years. Okay. So that yeah, and I think probably a million of that is probably because they didn't get him here right away. Like I, I do think his situation probably played into the fact that he got more money. Yeah, you know, and I mean, like the different. Flyers are kind of why he got arrested. 
Not that, not that it's the Flyers' fault, but like, yeah, yeah, I get like, that. Like they definitely feel like they owe him one, and like I would imagine, and like here yeah, you go, they have so, like, the money. Yeah. I mean, it's, and again, like them signing him to a bigger deal like this, just it, to me, it it just screams that they're moving money in some way, you know. Yeah. So like, I I just I just don't think it's that big of a deal like that where you know to like complain about it and and i get what you're saying owen um i just don't i just don't know if it's something right now to you know to so, really yeah be so high strung over especially because this the is, salary for the two years is a little over five point or excuse me 1.5 so yeah. like you know and what's kind of interesting here is i this is actually from hockey news hub on twitter so He's, he's a big KHL guy. And uh, Fedotov actually with CSK in Moscow, his salary this season paid him about 50 million rubles, which is equivalent to about 536,500 US dollars. So he's getting a raise that's essentially like, what, six times that number, if not more. I mean, it's that you have to just consider the fact that that was probably negotiated before he even came over just to give him some sort of incentive to mm-hmm. yeah. sign with the team and, and make his way over so yeah, yeah i mean i'm happy for the guy like he, he got the yeah, bag he deserves it after everything that he went through so that's like, a life that's a life-changing bag yeah yeah so i mean good for good for Fidotov. um i'm excited to see what he can do next season yeah no for sure i mean i think it'll be interesting um Another thing that'll be pretty interesting as the week kind of moves on here, the weekend, the Phantoms uh, gearing up for the Calder Cup. Uh, they'll be playing the Wilkes-Barre uh, Scranton Penguins in the first round. Uh, game one is going to be on the road tonight. I'll be doing a watch party. That'll be really fun. So hopefully everybody kind of tunes in. Uh, it's funny. I did two of these last year, and I did one, and they won 4-1 in a really good game. Uh, Tyson Forrester was really good, uh, and then the next one I did, they lost six nothing. It was great. It was like the 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 worst. Like they in the best of three series, they win game one, they lose the next game in double overtime, and then the next night they get absolutely blown out six nothing. It was the worst way to end the series. Hoping for a different result this time. Um, so game one uh, will be on the road. It'll be a best of three. Uh for the first round that's kind of how it goes when you're the lower seed so at least with this year for the phantoms they'll at least get a home game because with the difference in you know obviously states last year they played charlotte uh so the difference of you know from carolina to uh to allentown that's that's a far distance to go in such short amount of time last year when they did it they ended up playing tuesday thursday and friday so it was a little bit different with just kind of how the schedule went out and everything. So it was three straight road games. This year, the Phantoms will have game two at home on Friday night. Uh, myself and Paul will be there. Uh, that'll be really fun. Uh, we have a little secret about that, too. So stay tuned. We're not going to announce that yet. But um, any thoughts on, on just kind of the Phantoms coming up and in this uh, three-game series? Because if they win, they would play the Hershey Bears uh, if they go into the next round. So uh, any uh, any thoughts on the Phantoms here? There'll be a uh, a lot of good content coming to PHI pipeline for that for sure, and uh, yeah, that that secret that we have kind of <laughs> looking forward to that. Hopefully that you know everything works out. Fingers crossed. But um, the Phantoms could be they could be ready to make some noise. They they could seriously be you know one of those teams that just comes out and shocks everybody because throughout the whole year they were kind of just. They, they were pretty mid, but I think it was mostly because their roster was getting jumbled around so much with the call-ups and everything that the Flyers had to do. Now they have a lot of insurance with, you know, the Flyers are done. Phantoms roster is what it is, and they've gained a sh- shit ton of guys, you know, whether it was signings or tryouts or just guys that were loaned back to Lehigh Valley. Um, so they've gotten back. I actually put a tweet out about it earlier. Jinning Lixell Adder from the Flyers, along with Brink. Brink is probably the biggest name out of everybody. Then they got uh, Rizzo on a, on an amateur tryout, and they also got Hunter McDonald on a tryout. And then there's one other guy. I'm trying to remember who it was. Um, they had... Uh, Kolzov. Kolzov, yeah. Kolzov was the other one. Yep. In net. So that's, that's a huge addition, too. I'm with, curious to see who they go with in net. I think they've, they've recently been running... 
kind of all three of them, Sandstrom, Peterson, and, and Kolosov. I do think they'll probably rely. It can't be on... one each game. No, I think they'll rely more on. Last year they went Urs in the full way. I think they'll rely more on Peterson actually. I think they might because Peterson has played a lot better recently, and uh, I mean, not that it's anything to hang his hat on, but his save percentage now is over nine hundred in the AHL. So hey, I, there you go. Yeah. In, in the in the the conversation of winning versus development, I'd rather go Kolosov, um, even though Peterson is is the hot guy because he's probably going to be out of the organization after next season. So yeah. I kind of view it as just like give Kolosov the playoff games right away. Like it's a best of three. It could go either way. Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I do think there, there's some other guys with that roster. Like Legzinski is a big part of it. I think Cooper, Cooper Marodi is a big part of it. Legzinski has uh, six points in his last four. Yeah. Oh, that Excel has been very good down there. Like there's been a lot of guys that have played well uh, on that team this year. And like a lot of the vets usually, you know, tend to play well for the Phantoms as it kind of, goes along i'm hoping that stays the same i remember last year just watching some of the games like again like forrester had a really good couple of games there within in the playoffs um honestly kind of hoping that brink and and you know some of those other guys like lixel like they can do that as well like they can just kind of you know because again it's a best of three could go either way wilkes bear is not a horrible team but they're not great like they have some they, i think they have some good depth guys but It'll be interesting. We'll say. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and especially that they might play Hershey after. Um, might be a really exciting series yeah. there with Hershey. Um, I believe get to go to some size. of those games too. Yeah. yeah. Get to go to the, some of those games too. I mean, Hershey's not too far. Um, nice. Plus, there'll be some Lehigh games as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah. What's cool about Hershey's Arena is it's right in Hershey Park. Which is yeah, dope. right next to it. Yeah, yeah, it's dope. It's so yeah. I've had some. The Phantoms have had some close games with them too, so that could be an interesting series. They've had like one, two goal games. That I mean, Hershey's won pretty sure both of those. They had one. I think they had a one nothing game in a shootout as well, didn't they? Yeah, Something like that. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, and and it's just like I know Hershey's an absolute monster of a team. Like they're one of the best AHL teams of all time. Mm-hmm. But I, I mean, I don't know, dude. I this Phantom team is really interesting to me. And the fact that yeah. Luxell is back down there, he's going to help their power play a ton. Cooper Marodi has been really good on the power play this year. Dude, I don't know. That's and, 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 and I think I feel like Bobby Brink's name has not been mentioned enough here. I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm gonna have to step in and, and, and shut that down. Bobby Brink coming down from having a, a really solid rookie year with the Flyers, ready Fair. to make his 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 grand return to to Lehigh Valley. Yeah, a million right. goals. He rolled out for him. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Oh, and when's the oh, uh, Bobby the Brink Phantom Bowl jersey coming out over the Phantoms game on for on uh, Friday? When's the Bobby Brink Phantoms jersey coming? He's, I mean, or the Flyers one, but uh, I mean, I, I was gonna say, what makes you think I'm not thinking about getting a Bobby Brink Flyers jersey here? You should get both. Put them Uh-oh. both. Up, place the flag <laughs> and the jersey in the wall. <laughs> yeah. <Who's laughs> yeah. Bobby Brink. What's that? I said you should just become Bobby Brink. <laughs> Like he should just replace you on the pod. There's an Instagram it's account called Bobby Brink Fan Club, and I love it. Yeah, it they made the, uh, time. I they promise made I don't pictures. run it. They made the warm up pictures at the Jersey game. Oh, did yeah. they? Yep. Yeah, That's they fun. got their they got their cookies. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> That's good. All right. Uh, so again, watch party tomorrow night uh, for the Phantoms. I'll be doing that. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, and then the other. Next kind of thing here is, uh, again, we'll have, you know, obviously some in-person content Friday, and then we'll see how it goes for game three if it ends up being done by then. Uh, the next one, this one's this one is very warm in my heart. Uh, Jake Voracek officially retires. Uh, do you guys want to take this one? I'm going to go sit and cry. No. Uh, 34, obviously, 10 years as a flyer, 727 games played, 604 points. 10th all-time uh in uh, Flyers points, I believe he's fifth all time in assists. Uh, Fifteen NHL seasons, played multiple years. Columbus Flyers back to Columbus. Um, I mean, what can I say? I mean, one of the best people that's that I've ever met in hockey and doing media. Um, one of the most true and and incredible human beings. Um, just like so many good things, like the way that Jake treated me on a personal level was fucking incredible. 
Um, super good dude, really nice, would answer any question I asked. Uh, one of the coolest things that he did was right before we did the interview in, in uh, October, he was like, don't be afraid to just come straight at me. And like, I've kind of taken that, I think, with life a little bit, like trying to just like, no, don't be afraid to just kind of go right at it. Um, so I, I think that was, you know, and again, like he was, I mean, we did that, that interview was an hour and a half plus, and we were on the phone for probably two and a half, close to three hours. And it was like, you know, 10 o'clock at night near him. So like, it, it just shows like, you know, how, how good of a guy he is. And, you know, I, for like the long, like, it's funny, like the, the whole thing, like behind that interview and, and all too, is like, it started and, and it was like January. It wasn't even that long after he was gone from the Flyers. It was actually like right after his 1,000th game in the league with Columbus. And uh, he DM'd me on Twitter and uh, gave me a cell. And, you know, we just kind of started talking from there. Um, And like I, I tried getting him on, tried getting him on, and I just I couldn't. He just would not fucking answer. And I was like, dude, I was like, I don't think to myself, I botched this. Like this is done. Like, there's no fucking way. I just I was like, I was so upset. And then randomly, and it was October 7th, it was the day I recorded it, it came out the 10th. It's a Saturday morning. I get up for work because I work at 6 a.m. I get up, it's like 5 something. I get like 10 texts, 10 texts on my phone. And I usually have no notifications because it's so early in the morning because I'm usually looking at them. I put my phone down, I get up, I look at it. There's like 10 texts. It's like a random number. And I'm like, and I'm just, I, I could tell by the way the text was, I'd read like the last one that came up. I was like, that's Jake. I was like, hundred percent, that's Jake. And I, I like, you know, how, like, like you guys ever like get up so early, like you're so goddamn tired that like you, you feel it in your eyeballs. Like it felt like I had woken up and I had just gotten hit by a bus because that's how excited I was. Cause I was like, holy shit. And I, and I looked at it, it was him. It ended up being his check number. Um, and because it was again, it was a random number, and I was like, "Who the hell is texting me?" And I look, and I, I looked up the area code, and I was like, "That was him." It was like a a Vegas extension of a check number, and I was like, "Jesus Christ!" So I'm looking at it, I'm texting, we're going back and forth, and uh, yeah, and we put it up, and it, it was great. It was one of the best days of my life. I mean, talked about everything from AV to chalk to Christ, Mike Sealski. I mean, it, it was it was good. Weasel. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Um, it was awesome. I mean, again, he's just an incredible player and, um, you know, super, super, you know, grateful that at least, you know, we can obviously, you know, j- j- just reminisce on, on the, on the, on, on, on the good times. Like, I mean, he's one of the most underrated flyers and one of the worst eras of the team. And it sucks to say that because, you know, there were so many good years uh, kind of wasted there, but yeah, I mean, Jake was, Jake's awesome. Like, there, there's nothing else I could say. I mean, he's just, he's fucking great. Yeah, he's one of that, he's part of that, like, kind of three-headed monster almost of, you know, players that, that you really wish got to re- lift a cup here with him, Giroux, and another player that retired uh, recently, Wayne Simmons. Um, my One of my favorite Voracek moments actually came earlier this season on Twitter. Um, I don't know if you guys remember the whole uh, – some who, oh man, I got I got to pull it up right here. Uh, Jeff Wilkinson um, talking about how uh, how Jake Borchek, um used to get gout in his in his feet uh, from <laughs> eating too much red meat and, and red wine or something like that. And uh, he replied and said, "Yeah, I actually pissed myself <laughs> during the first or before one game." <laughs> That's good. And then uh, went on to say that he actually scored a one and one, and then. Or after the first period in that game, and then Thomas Williams with uh, Broad Street Hockey with that great article trying to pinpoint which game he he pissed himself he pissed in, couldn't himself find in. the exact one. I did but... text him. What do you remember? Which game you pissed yourself? And <laughs> I never got him, he never answered. So. Oh, it's gonna forever wow. a mystery. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean that's just such an amazing part of Flyers lore now. Like he's just such a character, and mm-hmm. I mean you guys I'm gonna the videos of him dancing in the locker room from yeah. this <laughs> with Ghost. Yeah. yeah. Do, doing the fucking air guitar and shit. Yeah, he's crazy. He, he, how, he yeah. also, from what I understand, a huge, uh, huge classic rock guy. Like he would hate yeah. when the young AC, guys DC. came in and would put like yes. rap on in the in the locker room. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He, he's a character. I'm, I'm gonna miss seeing him in a Flyers. You're gonna miss seeing him in the NHL. Yeah. 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 He was a huge uh, Bruce Springsteen guy. 
Like, oh yeah, yep. yeah. He, that, uh, that, that's actually a perfect segue into what I was just gonna kind of say real quick. There's uh, there's one quote from that interview that kind of sticks out among the rest, and uh, I'm gonna I'm not gonna censor myself because I think it's it's perfectly on brand for Jake Voracek. And so you asked him, I don't know if you remember this, yeah, what I he would change about it. <laughs> what he would change about his time in Philly, right? Yeah. And this this quote actually blew up all over Twitter the day that it happened. So on what he would change about his time in Philly, this is Jake Voracek. So many times I was picturing that parade, me fucking being drunk at the Rocky Stairs, just fucking singing Bruce Springsteen, absolutely hammered with the fucking 500,000 people in the streets. So the only thing that he would have changed was to win. That's just and it's such just a like, punch in the gut, man. It is, but it's like, oh dude, God. that's just like such a Jake Voracek moment. And yeah. you just love it. You just love to see yeah. it. Like it just makes me sad because like they were. He was such a good player, and G was such a good player. And like I mean, for me, I mean this. I mean this might be getting too far away from the conversation, but like Claude Giroux is my favorite hockey player. Like I, I want to say like almost ever. I mean, he's the guy I grew up with. Um, and I think that he's like a shoe in for. I mean, maybe not a shoe in because I know there's like a big anti Giroux contingent on Twitter, but. I mean, I think that he's like he's in the conversation of like reti- like retiring his jersey number. Yeah, he's one of the best. I think they should. I'm being honest. I think they absolutely and, should. And I mean, Voracek. I, I don't think, think he's quite there, but I think he should be in the Hall of Fame, like yeah. Flyers Hall of Fame for Voracek and Simmons. One hundred percent. If I'm being honest, I think I honestly think Jeru is probably the probably second best captain of all time. That I agree, one hundred percent behind Bobby Clark. Clark, and then it's and then it's G like. There weren't many other like longer ones. Like there was Lindros, better ones. Lindros a little bit. People, yeah, people would would argue Lindros, um, but like Primo I mean, was you, long enough to be in the I conversation. Drew, I think you put Giroux over Primo for sure. Yeah. The conversation oh, is Drew yeah, over Lindros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, people say like, oh well, Drew didn't win. Neither did Lindros. I mean, it was a better None era for the Flyers. Yeah, so it was a better true. era. He came closer, but right. I mean, yeah, it's a good point. I mean, Lindros and Drew both won Finals appearance. It's you know. The stats are are different. G played longer and yeah. wasn't as injured, and but Lindros changed that. I mean, he changed an era of hockey. Like he was mm-hmm. the face yeah. of the NHL in the nineties. And, and I mean, that might be getting too far away from the from the conversation. Yeah, but like it's just yeah. yeah I mean, uh, Vorchek, I you always associate him with Simmons and Giroux, and those guys all yeah. fly, fly yeah. Flyers Hall of Famers. For sure. Yeah, so, I, I think. Go ahead, Will. To to make a quick comment on the Giroux thing before giving Jake his deserved props. Uh, Fedotov's preferred number is number 28. He's 28, that's what I was going to say. And he's oh. wearing 82 here in Philly, which is an interesting little thing that it's very possible that maybe it was his decision, but it's very yeah, possible the Flyers were like, hey, we don't want you wearing It, it could have been out of respect, but at the same time, yeah. it, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. he'll not, his number yeah. will probably yeah. be retired. And, but and yeah, I think so... Yeah, I would assume Jake, Jake is Jake. probably going to retire as a flyer, and I would probably say the same with okay. G once he's done. You I think Jake's going to sign like a one day contract, like to start I, next I season. I really hope. I really, really I, hope I, so. He should. I, I, I really play. hope he gets his last, his last hurrah. And it would have been so first. cool to see like him and Simmons do it together. Like if yeah. Simmons just waited, yeah. but or before he just I, did uh, sooner. Before I let Will kind of finish his point, I. It, I last episode I think it was I actually said this without even knowing that Jake was announcing his retirement. Um, I said that you know the Simmons tribute game was really cool and I thought that they would be doing something for that like J- with for Jake pretty soon. But yeah, uh, I actually didn't even know that this was coming. So um, yeah, no, I, I can definitely see that and I can see the same thing with G. But you know, yeah. well, go ahead. Yeah, I wonder if that would be like an early next season, like one of the early games next season. We see mm-hmm. that with him, but who knows? But yeah. Um, Jake, he had an amazing career as a flyer. Um, awesome dude. Haven't gotten to know him personally. Like you have Chris, but he's just fantastic dude. So clearly. Um, he he still is Philly. Like you always still see him on Flyers Twitter, making appearances, making little comments. Like he he is Philly and yeah, he, he's he's just awesome. Um and hey, uh, Jake, you know we've got an empty spot on the pod now. If you're looking for some, uh, <laughs> some, oh, yeah. some work, you know. <laughs> um, I would love to see just his, kidding, uh, but I would love to see his block list on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that honestly would be somewhat of an honor to be yeah. among that that group. 
Uh, it'd be a shame because you'd miss out on yeah a lot of That's great accounts are for. Yeah, that there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not to pump my own tires, but I'll pump it for a minute. He there's like a hundred people he follows, and I'm one of them. It's pretty fucking cool. Huge. Everyone else is like, oh, I'm blocked, I'm blocked, I'm blocked. But no, like if we could do it, Owen, I'd love to. Like to end the the pod. There's a a song that uh, Jake. It, it's it's a song from um, Warren Zevon. Uh, Keep me in your heart. It's a song that he actually tweeted. The YouTube video of the lyrics the day he got traded. Um, I actually was listening to it all day. It it's a great song anyway, but I, I, I it's been on my playlist for a while. But regardless, um, I'll see what I can do. Yeah, I mean it's gonna be copyrighted. I wasn't really <laughs> at it, but yeah, no, I mean you guys get what I'm saying. Uh, so yeah, I mean look, Jake is it, it's incredible, and, and it sucks because you know. He, <sighs> I really wish you could have finished it out. Hey guys, producer Owen from the future here to remind you, if you haven't already, join our Discord. There's a lot of really fun stuff going on over there. You can chat with other members of the community live during Flyers and Phantoms games, discuss the latest news surrounding the Flyers and the NHL at large, and get the latest updates about new Mayor Media Co. content, like new episodes of Four Fly Guys. We also take a lot of our questions for the pod from the Discord, so if you want a chance to be featured in the next podcast, join the server. It's 100% free. Link is in the description. Thanks, guys. All right, so we're back. Uh, player grades here. Uh, we're going to be kind of doing these a little bit differently. So basically, we chose uh, 28 of the 35 Flyers that played this year. Uh, some of the guys that aren't really in this list are like guys like Louisville PDO, Rick Gardner, guys that only played like a couple games um, throughout the year. Obviously, with you know various call-ups and injuries, all the Flyers had, there's been a lot of guys. So... If you're familiar with tier maker, it's going to go just like how a tier maker would be S, A, B, C, D, F. That's kind of how the, the tier goes. And then we'll kind of just go through each guy uh, alphabetically. Uh, first one up in the alphabetical order would be Roddy Adderd. Any uh, any thoughts on uh, Adderd here? I feel like I'd give him probably a B, but I'm kind of on, I mean, not that it matters, but I'd say lower end of B. I think he played well. Um, his expectations are really low, but he played a lot better than we all expected. Um, I really, I earlier during the show at another episode said, I didn't expect him to be anything more than an AHL -er, And I think he showed that that might not be the case. Yeah. Yeah. For I, me, I mean, I, yeah. I, sorry about him. I thought, uh, I thought I played well. Like I thought, you know, he came in. Um, I didn't necessarily think there was much there with him. Like I didn't know what was, what was essentially the future for him in the Flyers work. Um, and I was kind of skeptical on like his game and everything, but he, he played well, like he came in and then in a tough time, Flyers needed bodies, um, you know, played 12 games. Wasn't great. Wasn't flashy. I think he has a huge problem offensively. Um, and I think that's more of the Flyers development. And we've talked about that before, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think there were some, some good moments with that. I think a B is probably a fair rating. I'd probably stay the same, to be honest. No. Yep. All right. Next, we have Cam Atkinson. This, this is. Uh, oh man. This one's probably going to be a little bit brutal. I'd, I'd say. What, what do we think? It's got to be I, it. He, I mean, he didn't have a horrible start to the year, so I'm trying to take that into consideration and not, you know, have too much recency bias. It's hard to argue anything other than F. He had as many um, points as he did the streak where he didn't score. He won 28 games without a goal and then had finished with 28 points. I do remember that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean it, it's, it's, his worst, it's his worst season statistically, like in his entire career. It's, it's, just the, worst season, yeah, it's the worst season in general of his career, I think. That's why. That's why yeah. I mean. It's it's yeah. it's just a huge outlier for him. I mean, it, it kind of seemed like he just checked out towards the end of the season. To be honest, um, it's hard to argue for anything other than F. I I think you could kind of slide him into you know a D rating just based on you know the success he had at the beginning of the season. But I mean, he just fell off a cliff, so I think F's pretty fair. I'm gonna agree with that. I think Cam 100% his play deserves an F. I think, but. The, the fact that he started the year off pretty solid, actually, I think he was one of the team leaders in points for the first, like, 15 games. That, and then the fact that, just the fact that he was even on the ice 
after, you know, his neck surgery, a big injury, missed the entirety of the season before. The fact that he even came back, I'd give him like, you know, a D minus or something like that. So definitely like on the lowest possible. Just give him the F at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. (laughs) Yeah. He gets the F. It's a a sympathy D. There's there's nothing you could say. Like he was just downright bad. Yeah. Yeah. And I get it, Paul. I know he's your favorite player and all, but. I mean, yeah, I've, just, I've always liked him, but you know, it's it's just sucks just to see. Bad. Yeah. yeah, you should have wore your Columbus uh, Atkinson jersey. <laughs> that's, that's, that's uh, always room for a bounce back next season. The next oh, one yeah. is uh, Owen's favorite, Bobby Brink. Hell yeah! You so I mean, S-tier. we can just slide Bob into S tier and move on, right? <laughs> it's pretty. I feel like that's a pretty fair ranking. If there was a tier above S tier, I put him above S tier, but. Okay. <laughs> it's good no but i mean realistically i think bobby brink had a really impressive rookie outing um i mean start of the year he was up there in the in the calder conversation in my opinion mm-hmm. um i mean he, he had that little stretch where he, he struggled got sent down to the to the phantoms for what was it 11 games yeah something like that um and then got called back up and immediately scored a goal and i just really liked his like kind of bounce back attitude there he showed that you know unlike Cam Atkinson where you go through a slump and you never kind of get it back. He handled that really well and handled that really professionally. And I think that shows a lot of maturity for his age and for being a rookie. So I think that I can, for me, I I might be a little biased. I think, I think I, I want to put him in a, but I, I understand that he kind of fell off a little bit. So I'm I'm willing to listen to B arguments. I mean, I think for me, like, I was thinking more of like a C plus kind of B minus in that area. Like I thought there were some games where I thought Brink was like really good. Um, others where I thought like he kind of tailed off a little bit. And then you, you saw that, um, you know, I mean, just based off play, like the 57 games, he was like moments. He was here moments. He was here. Like it's, it, I feel like the rating kind of in the middle of a B minus C plus is kind of fair. Like just like middle of the pack. Like I didn't think he was, he, it wasn't bad. He just didn't it, – it, it's just like the consistency thing. If he kind of kept that up, his, his rating would have been higher, I think, in my eyes. But, like, mm-hmm. not that I think he was bad. I thought he had a really good season. Like, he looked good in dev camp. Um, I thought he was one of the best forwards in, in, in that entire camp. Unfortunately, didn't really carry it over the rookie game. But he was buzzing in, like, the first maybe – maybe two weeks of the season. Then got that first yeah. goal. I thought he dipped a little bit after he scored his first central goal. Um and, you know, I, I and really in that last game of the season, I thought he was one of the best flyers on the ice in the first period, and then he ended up getting sad a little bit. But He was great I mean, down the stretch in those last few games. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, again, I think, like, when it mattered, like, I thought he played well. But I think a B-minus, C-plus is, is – that's kind of where I would kind of go with Brink. Yeah. I think he gets a B. Yeah. Okay. I think he played Thank really you, well. I don't think you could argue that Ronnie Adderd was better than him and we gave Adder to B. Yeah. Well, 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 by games played. Well, I mean, sure, but like, well, it's a small I sample think, size. I, I, I think Bobby Brink was pretty like, yeah, he had some games where he was, eh, but then he also had other games where he was one of the best players in the ice, and I think to yeah. me that averages out to a B. Yeah, you can't tell me that you're more impressed by what you saw from Adder than what you saw from Brink. Yeah, no. Well, I mean, I'm just going off games played. Like, if it, it's, it's yeah, but I think that makes it roll. I think that but makes shouldn't it more that factor in? Though. No, I think that actually makes it more impressive the other way. Because no, he played I think it makes it more impressive. Less. Well, right, why exactly. Didn't he play more games? It... Why what? Then why wouldn't he? Why didn't he play more games then? Well, I mean, they're they're two different players. I mean, it, one's a defenseman, the other one's a winner. The, yeah, you know, I, he was, one made the team out of camp, the other one didn't. If you think that I mean, Brink, it's, two, it's two completely different situations. If you think that Adder, you know. It's not like less like games makes it more played, impressive. Well, it's just a smaller sample size and like the toughest stretch of the season. Right. For the so, team. right. So it makes it even more impressive that Brink was able to keep that kind of. Yeah, but that you know, doesn't like mean that I think he played bad. It just goes off of, in my eyes, it's it's the games played. Like, if you're that hot to start the season, in my eyes, and then you dip, you have to get get sent back down. Like. Adder played down there the whole year and at least, you know, came up and stayed up, but that more so because of injury. So it's different. Like Brink in, in my eyes, like 
it, it's not it's not even a knock. Like I'm not even saying he was bad. It's just off the games played, and I thought there were times where he just looked invisible too. Like th- that was part yeah. of it. Like, and no, I agree, and that's that's why I think he's also a B because he's, it's just a matter of consistency. Like he was, you know. He, the fact that he stayed at the NHL level for almost 60 games is impressive, considering where our expectations were at the beginning of the year. Um, he was the best player in, in camp, best player in the preseason, I think, uh, at least, you know, prospect-wise, and then came in, stuck out for almost 60 games. I think that the more games played makes it even more impressive in a bigger sample size. Uh, I, yeah, I think it's a B. Yeah. Uh, next one is Kate. Ooh. Uh, I mean, the injury definitely set him back. D. I, I, you know what? I think it's D. D for me. Yeah, I, I think I would agree with that actually. Which is crazy. I loved him. Like I was gonna get a Cage jersey to start this year. That That's was my crazy. plan. Um, I he was my favorite player last season, easily. Um, but th- this year he was pretty disappointing, and I hope that the injury. Don't I hope that's injury. Game. Yeah, I hope that's because of that. But yeah. regardless, I would yeah, say it to be you, you have to much. you have to score more than six goals if you play in a middle six role. You have the, to. The yeah. games he scored goals in were the like when when the games where he was really noticeable, he was really good. It's just they were too few and far between. I mean, the for thing. until the last what six seven ish games, he had three goals. Yeah, and I think two of them were empty netters. Mm-hmm. I think, or, right, I think yeah. one was a denetter, but one was like a fluke. He had that fluky goal in Vegas. So really he had like one like legit goal. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. I just view it and I'll I'll let you go in a minute, Paul. But I just think like to be that high in the lineup and play with, you know, guys like Palin, guys like Hathaway, who at least, you know, for a long stretch of the season generated offense. Cates is a guy that I just think he's got to have more offense. Yeah, yeah no, I, I agree with that. Definitely, yeah. yeah. I agree. I mean, I think the injury definitely set him back. He played 59 instead of 82. Uh, you know, it's it definitely set him back. I don't think it it was the whole reason, though, that his offense was bad. I mean, his offense was struggling before the injury even happened. So you just like to see more, especially from where he was at before. But um, I'd go. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'd, at at the most, I'd say maybe like a low C. I'm, I'm going to give him a D. I would say a low C too, but I think D's fair. But yeah. by the way, I think um I think the Kate's injury was the first piece of content that I put out for Mayor Media. Was it? The the you injury know. the injury write up, yeah. There you uh, go. your tires yeah. a little bit. I like to see it. <laughs> you, <laughs> you love to see it. Uh next one's Coots. Oh, man, eight. this one hurts. This one's tough. This one hurts. <sighs> man. I wanna say it's so hard, man, because he had, like, the first, like, half of the season, like, even more, like, you could even say more than half the first half of the season, he was really good. I mean, but it's kind of the same thing as Atkinson where he kind of fell off. It was pretty much he, he got He got it back in the first, like, in the last, like, few games. I mean, here and there. Like, he had, he had some good games sort of, like, in that last little stretch after the losing streak, but. I, I, I want to say like, like a B minus low, low B. Yeah. B minus. Yeah. yeah I'm saying like a minus, minus kind of, he yeah. was playing like a kind of like a, like I would say a D and for a while, but like the, the early part of the year, like for the most part, he was pretty like good. So I think B. yeah, exactly. Early yeah, part of the year. Kind of like an a, so. a for probably till like January. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think, yeah. I think he's there. So it makes yeah. it so hard. Yeah. yeah I would, I would have said something somewhere along, you know, probably an A first half of the year but then the second half especially when he got the C that yeah. dude you can't go oh, that I, many I, mean, games I, I also think the scratch didn't help the scratch didn't help but you also can't go the only reason he got scratched is because he went like 15 games without a point I mean yeah. you know yeah but like as the captain you can't go that long without I mean, production I, we talked about this I I just don't know if that's if that's you know something you scratch a guy like that for um I don't whether it's the right call just, is is one thing, but like yeah. the reason why he was scratched, like how bad he was playing, yeah, like that that back still remains. Yeah, and yeah. exactly like especially when you consider the Kateri as a defensive guy, like when your defensive game dips and your offense is still not there, he was just like, struggling in general. Finish. And then I think that just just sunk him underwater at yeah. that point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next one's Delorier. 
I like this one. I'm going to be honest. I was going to say D, and I'm not on the high end of that either. Like a D minus? He, uh, yeah, like he didn't even do did nothing. I feel like a lot of what he was here nothing. for. I, he's, what? he's Flyers Ryan Reeves. Like, yeah, he doesn't not, really do at least much. With Reeves, I feel like with game Reeves out. though, like he's at least involved in the play. Yeah, Deloria, I would say Deloria is more involved in like, plays he, than Reeves is though. On on our notes, it has sixty games, and I could have sworn I genuinely thought he played maybe forty. Yeah, like just I was because, surprised at that too. Like he was scratched a ton. He leaves uh, the NHL and fights this year. Not that that really. I don't know. What, what, that I is. don't remember him having a legit tilt outside of Rempe. Yeah, no, that's the problem. Like, with Reeves. Probably the only he? one he had. Mm-hmm. He had a pretty that's, decent one with Reeves. That's the issue with De- with Delorier though. This season was there was times where I felt like, especially during the losing streak. Like I know he wasn't in the lineup. But there was times in the beginning of the year where the team would just be down and they were like had absolutely nothing going. And you're like, okay, well, this is the moment that you need Deloria to step up and, and do it something. Would, it, would, it was always the nights yeah. he was in the lineup. Always. Yeah. Always. I think that I think he's an important type of player to have in your lineup though during a rebuild. Like going into the season, like having Deloria on the roster, I think is a was a good thing. And then once they yeah. started kind of outperforming themselves, I think they might have utilized him too much. Yeah. yeah, I think I think some of the issues with the Flyers roster is just the fact that there's a lot of like duplicate players. Exactly, because you don't so really like need Hathaway. a Delorier when you yeah, have like, Hath- like you have yeah. Hathaway in the lineup, and then you have Delorier. You have Paling in the lineup, and then you have Lawton. You know what I mean? It's like there's a lot of it's a lot of those bottom sixers. It's because they need guys to play. So I don't know. Um, I'm okay with the D for Delorier. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd also go with D there. Uh, we'll stick with the D's. Then next one is Drysdale. Small sample size. It's kind of tough. Yeah. The injury. That injury was brutal. Came here, he came here injured. I'm gonna I mean, okay. I, I'm gonna go with like a C. Yeah. Because I, I think that I, I was, I, I'm I was going to go like down B to plus. A B, B plus. Just because knowing that he was hurt now, like what he yeah. hurt. But we can't grade on yeah, like you can't grade based on injury. Attenuating. Yeah. Why not? You can you can <laughs> grade. No, no, no. You like, can't grade a guy because he played hurt. You can grade from injury in the sense of like you know if they came back from something, but if if there's a guy dealing with something when everybody else on the team is also banged up, I don't really know if you can like. Well, I mean, he's getting core muscle surgery this year. I don't think that he was just banged up. Yeah, but like yeah. the way like, I view it is like his play was a C in my opinion. Just because he's injured, that doesn't mean I give his grade a B plus. It means I'm understanding of his C and I'm like forgiving of that. But again, I gave him accurate D. So, I mean, <laughs> but um, like, I don't know. I feel like if you you can do like, I don't think it's, I don't view it as like he's getting a advantage because he was hurt. I view it as he literally was playing through an injury that the Flyers are cursed with. Giroux had it. Gossesper had it. Hayes had it. Brian Elliott had it. Um, like the core muscle, and it it's killed guys. Like not you know literally, but it's you know it's like. You look at like Giroux's season in 16 17, had the lowest shots on goal in his career, lowest goals, lowest shooting percentage, everything. He couldn't move. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just view Drysdale like comes in middle of the season. There's all the hype around them. And I, I saw some really good things like before he got hurt then and then obviously came back. Obviously, look, it's going to be time, but I, I'm high on Drysdale. Like, I think there's a lot there. Um, so yeah, I'm high on Drysdale too. I just I didn't see enough from him to warrant a B this year for me. Yeah, like I, I think he, he came in hot, and then I mean you're right, the injury was brutal for him, and I think it just kind of like in the last like you know back. I, in I just season, think there's something to be said about a guy who's 23 years old and then comes back in the middle of a playoff race. You're, you're right. You're that. right. I mean, and, I mean, look, I don't have to be right. I'm just saying, like, no, but I you just have a point. Do it. Yeah, like I just think like. I just think there's something to be said about that, especially mid-season. Like he could have packed it in and not played, you know. And then he's yeah, but that's that's not always a good thing. I mean, for for the well, long no, term, but like, player. yeah, obviously. But I mean, it's clearly especially it's especially a guy with an injury history like him. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't exactly devil's advocate. Like, like what's he gonna do? Say no, I I'm not gonna play. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> I mean, he's a pro athlete, so yeah. Um, 
I don't know. I'd, I'd give him a Ward date. played through a grade two separated shoulder from the fucking yeah. door game until Just the hockey player thing. Yeah. So like we got, I, I got a C. I give him a C. Paul gave him a D. Chris, you gave him a B. And Owen, were you a C as well? I gave I him a C. Plus. All right. Well, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll give him. I'm like a C plus with him. Well, that still averages out to a C. I think so he's I going to be better. like a B plus next season. Oh, I, I think he'll yeah, be a B plus or an A next season yeah. for sure. Yeah. I don't think right. he's going to be that effective next year because he's going to be hurt. I think – no, I don't think next season, but I think in the grand scheme of things, Drysdale has all the tools to be exactly yeah, what everybody sure. thinks he will be. I just, I just don't know if they're going to hit that. He's going to be able to be like fully ready to go. No, defensemen take time, and he's going to be hurt. Recovering no, that's from what surgery. I mean. Like, what I mean is like the injury part. Yeah, like, exactly. He's not going to be able to show like his legit – like fucking right, – yeah. Yeah, defense take I mean, time, and he's recovering from the surgery, so it's going to yeah. be like you know, kind of a uh, a big uh, test. Uh, yeah. uh, next one's Urson. This got another be one a, that hurts. I give him an A. a. Yeah. yeah, you give him an A. Yeah, it, yeah, a? absolutely, Shit. absolutely. Pass I want to hear what Chris has to say. An A. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Holy fuck. To get uh, thrown in that kind of situation and, and play as many games as he did and perform consistently well for so long. It's got to be that it. many salties. I think, he, I think he's an A All backup right. and like a C starter. I mean, I think he gave up a lot of soft goals too, but, and, and when it mattered most, he collapsed. But yeah. that's to be expected of a guy who's a first year full season goalie getting thrown into a starting position. I, I don't think you can sure. say like when it mattered I most. Go ahead, Chris. No, yeah, no. I mean, look, I, I didn't cut you off, but no, you're good. I just view it as like he's clearly not there yet. Uh, the Flyers, they don't have a starter for next season. Um, you know, they locked up Fedotov, which we talked about. And, and I think with Urson. I don't know. I mean, I think I'd probably give him like a. I, I honestly, I'm I'm struggling to find a a real number to give because I think there were some moments where he was really good, and I think there were some moments where he was really bad, and I think I'd have For to sure. go in the middle, probably like a B minus C plus somewhere. I'm with you on that. I think he's like a C plus. I, I just I just wow. don't think he's. Wow. That's crazy. I don't know. Like I I look I I think there's definitely something to be said about you know, going into the middle of the season with that and obviously becoming a starter mid season. But at the same time, like it wasn't just like a one time thing where he was giving up these goals. This was like an every other night kind of thing. And you saw it against most of the top teams, even when Hart was still on the roster. Um and look, I, I like Urson a lot. Like I think Urson's there. I just I'm not ready to appoint him as the next starter or as the next this or that. Like He's gonna get picked. He's gonna get picked apart. It happens to every goalie. It's already started to happen. It's just how he battles through it. And I think there's definitely something to be said about the way he finished the season because I thought he was incredible, honestly, in the last probably maybe week, week and a half ish or so. Yeah. Um, I just don't know if I could base like it, it's just it's too up and down for me to just go real high or real low. Like I'd rather just go in the middle, like B minus ish. So, so here's my like mental math here, right? He played 51 games, 890 save percentage. Just in my head, he probably roughly had 10, 12 games where he like was just deserved a D grade, but then he probably had 15 games where he deserved an S and was like single handedly uh, winning the Flyers games. I don't know, f- 15. Okay, I mean, but I'm probably close to that. He was dominant in a lot of games, and right, then I feel against, like against who though? They were all right. Good teams. That's not the argument it's you want to make. Yeah. No, that is says. you have to. No, you, but got to, no. you have to go into that because you can't no. say he was you great can. against. These, yes, you can. You can but say he's great against those teams, but when he gives up a bad goal against a team like Boston. No, you can't because that's the exact same argument that people make against Morgan Frost, saying, "Oh, he only scores against bad teams." You no, can't I, say that. Look, I understand that, but it's different, though. It's, it's different not. with a goalie. Yes, it is. It's different with a goalie. Well, mom and dad are fighting again. <laughs> it is so different. Though. It's so okay. different with a goalie. But then the other thing, then, is – and Alexander Appleyard put this out on Twitter, and it was – I think at least I saw it clear as day in the eye test. During the midst of Erson's run of kind of some bad games, 
he did he pulled up some stats and basically showed that miraculously the Flyers give up a lot more high danger chances when Erson's on say, the ice. I will and, say to I didn't mean to cut you off, but to go against my argument, they also were horrific in front of him. And I did mention that a lot this year, how bad exactly. they were in front of him. And it's it's still the same collective Fair. issue that happened with Hart a couple of years ago, yeah. where it was he got picked apart high glove a ton and the Flyers were also really bad in front of him. Yeah. It, it's just like the same coinciding. Yeah. And, and if you're going to argue that Drysdale playing through injury gives him a higher grade, then I say that putting a rookie goalie in 50 games and being, and, and not just that it was 50, it's that it was in that second half of the year, he was suddenly like a John Tortorella starter who's playing on pace for like 60, 70 games. Yeah. It, like, Given oh, that, and again, I'm not even considering that, but if you're considering that with Drysdale, I, right. I, okay. I, I'm not backing off the A, basically. I, I get that, but like, I, it's not like I'm saying he's like a D. Like, I'm giving him middle of the pack. Like, I just don't. I, the, to me, there was just too. There was, I don't know. I just think there's too many soft goals at times where they just, they yeah. just didn't, they couldn't afford it. Yeah. I don't know. I oh, just want your final thoughts that. since we, uh, you kind of talked me into a like a B B minus. I, I I'm not willing to go to A with him. I, I I'm with Chris. There were just too many games where he just kind of shit the bed. And I understand he's a rookie. Yeah. I understand he was thrown into an impossible situation. But I mean, I don't think you can say when when they needed him most, he vanished like the fucking avatar, and then <laughs> just like not, and then put him in A tier. Like I don't think you can do that. So I, I yeah. think I'm going with B yeah. personally. No, so our sure. average comes out to a B then. I think that's I think that's fair. I'm okay with that. Yeah, again, I did say B minus just for everyone to you know. Right. What's the face for? I said B minus. <laughs> I thought you said yeah. B minus or C plus to no, be fair. I said, C B plus or B I said B minus C plus. I said either or whatever one in the middle. Um next All right, one anyway. Is, <laughs> next one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, next, next one's Farabee. Farabee. Oh man. Another know. guy who had a really good he, first half of the season, but then mm-hmm. kind of like right in the middle, see, smacked down yeah, in the I mean, middle. I, I think yeah, I'm, I'm the most probably, I think I'm probably the most passionate about my stance on this one. I think. Yeah, Paul's not a big Farabee. Yeah, uh, it's not no. that I'm a, not a big Farabee. I think yeah. he's got the skills. I just don't see the compete level, and I've struggled to see it for pretty much the entirety of the last two years. I think when it matters most. Um specifically in like, you know, the, the chase for the playoff spot, he kind of disappeared both production wise. And he just didn't really have like, so to dip I wasn't it. seeing. Yeah. I mean, there's a ton of guys on the roster that also dipped, but like, I, it's not like it wasn't for a lack of trying. I just, there was certain shifts where I would just look at Farabee and I'm like, I don't really see the computer, the intensity here. I don't know. Maybe that's just a me observation, but I'd give him yeah. probably a, yeah, I mean, I think a, a low B. Fine. I'd give him a low B, high C. Great first half, bad second half. Right. I give him a B easily. Um, like not even like I wouldn't even consider low end a B for myself on his grade because that first half of the year he was one of the best five on five players in the league. Yeah, he like was. consistently That's top true. three in that. And like, right. yeah, he did fall off a bit, but like he was actually dominant. Um, in that first half of the year. So for me, I I would say B, because yeah, he did fall off, but I don't think he was horrible when he fell off. So I, I think I think B. Um, Speaking of falling yeah. off, can't stay on top of his game, can't stay on his feet either. Somebody pointed out to me on my beer <laughs> league team that every time they watch Faraby, he's on the ground like he's just laying <laughs> on the ice, and then I, now I can't stop noticing it. He falls really? over so much for no. I did reason. notice that too. It, it reminded me, do you guys remember in 2019, that season, the infamous 2018-19 season where Travis Sanheim fell over and they got scored on every single time <laughs> yeah. it happened? That's what Joel Farabee reminded me of a lot that, this that season. That is one of the most worst seasons. Yeah. That, that's the famous picture of Alex Lyon in the middle of the slot and the four Flyers defensemen are all around them Yep. in Nashville. <laughs> the Brutal. goalie. Oh, my God. Yeah. But yeah, that I mean, I, I, I think I'm for Farabee. I, Farabee? I think for Faraby, I'm um, I'm good with like C plus. C yeah, plus. I mean, plus. the good news is he, he yeah. finally broke his career high and he, he made it to fifty points, so that's good. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'd say I mean, he broke his career high before that, didn't he? 
No, he tied it. He tied it last year, and then he broke it this year. Okay. But, uh, uh, next one's Forrester. I think it's an A. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah, I'm I mean, I'll, I'll give it, I'll give it yeah. low A, but A minus. Yeah, I mean, he, he was fantastic defensively. As much as we mm-hmm. kind of all like didn't want to root for him, I feel like at the start of the year when it was like him versus Bobby, who wasn't trying to root for no, him? Like, I don't know about okay. that. No, okay, I don't not, think not that I didn't want to root for him, for him, but like, yeah, it was that he wasn't producing, and that it was him versus Bobby, kinda. And like mm-hmm. I yeah. personally wanted to see more of Bobby, but he was making it really hard to not mm-hmm. play him because he was just really good defensively. Yeah, um, yeah I think. And then he layered in the offense yeah. back into that. I, I my, yeah. My gripe with Forrester at the beginning of the year was, and Paul has said this before, like the the idea of everyone drafted as a two way guy, like. I, I, I was so over like hearing about the defensive play and everything that he made because I was so sick of hearing like all the little intangibles that every other guy has that we drafted them not to do that they're doing. Yeah. And Forrester's the guy who should just be ripping Pox into the net and he wasn't. And finally he started to do that. And um but it, you saw goals. it all come together. Yeah, I mean twenty goal season, only thirteen assists, that's the other area where I'd like him to get some more, but he will if it went the, you know with the defensive game and obviously who he's playing with. So yeah, I mean to to have a 20 goal season, some really good goals, um, some really important goals at times too. Mm-hmm. Um had some good tying goals. I don't remember if he had any I he had the one game winner uh against Boston, which is probably the best goal of his career up and up until this point. Um yeah. and you know he's he's had some some good moments. Um Overall, I think it was definitely a, a step in the right direction for the, you know, for Dev Camp and Rookie Camp, um, where mm-hmm. he didn't look great. It just was kind of, I think, just it, trying it, to get the rust off and stuff. And yeah, it, took it him seemed like he was kind of just coasting through it. Yeah, um, but no, he. Uh, I thought I thought he looked good. I, th- I think an A is a fair rating. Like I mean, he played most yeah. of the season, seventy-seven games. Uh, he was, you know, he dinged up a little bit, but yeah, no, I mean, I think that's that's pretty fair. Yeah. Um, Next one's Fedotov. I mean, oh, sorry, Fedotov. Yeah, Fedotov. I think the fact that he's even here is impressive, but grade yeah, but wise, I feel like that's you can't. more of a grade for Danny. Yeah, no, it is hundred yeah. percent. I mean, it's you, you saw with the extension that that's probably part of the reason why he's here. But yeah, there's not. Um, you can't really say much. It was, you know, the one game he came in and played well. The next game he wasn't great, and then the next game was the nine thirty game, and no one was good yeah. in that game. Like, yeah, I mean. Yeah. 4.95 goals against average. That's those are some brutal numbers. But like when you you know actually put it's in the fact of why that happened, yeah, exactly. Mm. It's yeah. he'll be fine. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not worried about him. I don't really know what you grade that though. I mean, I think he's not, honestly ungradable. Like I don't think you could. Yeah, he needs to be held back a year. Yeah, like I th- I think I honestly like just kind of leave him out. Like, there's not much you can. I mean, he just didn't play enough. Like I mean, yeah. for the you sake know. of it, just give him a C. Is yeah, that yeah, fair? Sure. Fair yeah. in the middle. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think, like, yeah. Uh, next one is Frost. <laughs> this is another interesting one. Chris, you want to lead this one? These are going to fucking kill me for this. I'm going to say A. <laughs> okay. Um, I would agree. I mean, to, to do 70 games, miss, you know, scratched for six of the first eight, eight of the first 10, and, you know, to get 13 goals, score the biggest goal of their season up until that point. Yeah, and forty-one points uh, plus four. Thought he was good in the draws, good in defensively. Um, I, I've seen a lot of improvement with him, more off ice. I think um, mm-hmm. I'd love to see him really. He, he's talked about working on his shot the past three seasons. Now I really wish he'd be able to shoot more. Yeah, uh, I do think he has the skill to, to be a twenty goal guy. He had nineteen last year, thirteen this year. He dipped a little bit in that area, uh, and in points he had forty-six. But um, yeah. You know, also, I don't think, you know, taking off the power play and on the power, you know, off and on and all that, too, and um, hasn't necessarily had the easiest path of development with the Flyers. But mm-hmm. like, I, I've said it time and time again. I think there's something there with him and the skill, just the, the little one touch plays that he makes. That's the most impressive thing to me is just how yeah. how much space he creates in the offensive zone and with guys like Konechny. 
Yep. He does it on a, a nightly basis. Um, you know, I mean, I, I was a, I thought Frost had a good year. I, again, I, w- I would keep him. I wouldn't get rid of him. Um, I would honestly, I, I, I think he's the future second line center of this team. I wish they started him in wing a couple years ago. They didn't. And if you're going to go with center, then fine. If you're going to be center, stick him there. That's how I say. I think Frost is an A. I agree. I think okay to be sat out. So we sat out 11 games, uh, most of them at the beginning of the year. The fact that he came in and... Also, did play nicked up at the end of the season. Just wanted to add that. Yeah, that too. The fact that he came in and kind of just kept his chin up and his... Well, I guess kept his head down, I should say. Just focused on what he could control. You know, he, he knows Tortorella is not going to be, you know, the, the biggest fan of him. He's not going to always be in his corner. But if he just plays this game and do what he's good at, which is exactly what he did do. Like Chris said, he was good in the face-off circle. He was good on the power play. Like, even though the power play sucked, his movement, his ability to create space, nobody on this team can do zone entries like him. It's just the little things to his game that make him what he is. I think he executed them pretty well. To finish top five on the team in points after missing that many games is impressive. I think it's an A. Yeah. I would pretty much agree. agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Much more to add. Well said, you guys. Uh, next one, Adam Jenning. He's another one with like a tar that I, I just like it's don't. The same thing with Adderd. Yeah. Who? Yeah. A tar. Who? A tar is crazy. A tar. <laughs> oh, God. Here we go. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's the um, same same kind of deal with Adderd for me, where it's just like, I don't, I don't really view him fully as like an NHL or like I see him more as like an AHL guy or like seventh defenseman. Like, wasn't the most impactful, but also like wasn't like horrible. He was just just, just kind of slotted in when they needed him to. So I mean, I I think what do, what do we give Adderd a, a B? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I I still think that I would put like Adder Dan Jenning in like a like a C, but okay. that's just me. I could kind of give Jenning that. a C. I mean, I think you see a C. Jenning Jenning a C. I think yeah yeah. I'm fine I, I'd so. say I'd say high C, low B, kind of like Adder. It's the same situation is, is, where is the next guy pretty much the same. It's Gurionov. I mean. I think Gurionov and Jinning are very similar in the sense that I would have liked to see both of them more. Mm-hmm. I think Jinning. I didn't notice uh, Gurionov. That's because he yeah, never played. He only played four fucking games. But yeah, yeah, he, he so, played four games. Ungradable. His, like his biggest highlight as a flyer was hitting the outside of the post. I mean, <laughs> oh, like sick. first game yeah, was I mean, a seven nothing Tampa loss when it was four nine in the first period. So. Yeah, you, you just would have liked to see more from both of them, like games played wise, and I think. Jenning was fine. He scored his first career goal in that blowout loss. So, well, one of them. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Probably a C for Jenning and maybe a C. I don't know. What the hell do you even say for Guriana? He hardly played. Yeah, I think it's the same thing as uh, who did we say? Fedotov. Yeah. 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 I uh, I'll, go, I'll go with a different route on the next one because the next guy, this is the last one that has uh, under, what is it, 20? The last guy who's about twenty-ish games uh, or so. Pretty much every other guy left has played at least. There's two more. more. Two more. No, there's one. There's, uh, there's Johnson, and then there's Lixell. Well, Johnson, yeah. Well, Johnson played, you know, whatever, seventeen. Right. Uh, I'm going like guys under ten. So the last one yeah, would yeah, be yeah. Peterson. So he played five. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know D, like D- Peterson. Ten to D even go. Lower, lower. I like, think I had one really good game, had one really bad game, and then had like two other ones where he was like okay, in my eyes. Mm-hmm. I'd agree yeah. with the, with a the D. D minus. Yeah, took a well, it was it was Pittsburgh uh, and the first Kings game where he was terrible, um, yeah. and then he was good in the other no, Kings game. And- I don't even agree with that. The Pittsburgh game he was terrible. Everybody knows that. I mean, I thought, that was- yeah, I thought the first Kings game he got held out to dry. He did. One at home. Because if you looked at – I know, Will, you were at that game with, with both of us. Mm-hmm. That's where we the met fi- of, of the five goals, I think maybe two of them were on him. 
the other three were yeah. just straight up like everybody in front of him is getting cooked. I mean, it's true. That was a ridiculous. Yeah. Scene. Wasn't, wasn't he in net in that Anaheim game? Or was, or was it the no, that was, that was, no, that was Urson. And, uh, that was the stretch of Urson in the beginning of the season where he couldn't stop a beach ball. Right. Yeah. And it was like the Dallas game and then that. Like you just – then he ended up playing better. But, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean – Peterson had his moments, but – Yeah, it's, I mean, he's, yeah. he's Cal Peterson. I mean, what else is there to say? Yeah. Uh, Garden Hathaway. I think it's an A. 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 Oh, uh, oh. A. Yeah. That's just the prime – dude, how do you disagree? That's just like a prime <laughs> example of a guy who just plays his role to perfection. Because, okay, but – so I view it as like we're not grading on expectations. It's play. Right. Yeah, and not a he didn't play – I would give him a B comfortably, but he didn't produce like an A player in my opinion. He, he, well, he was, I, mean, I view dude. it as like – I view it as like the way that they play plus like the effect they have with the team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, like he just, he just, he's a role player, and he played his role to perfection. Yeah. I don't. I don't yeah, know. but I the reason why he's a role player. player is because he's not capable of playing like an A. If Obviously. TK, if TK, yeah, but, yeah, but okay, well, for example, I mean, maybe Morgan Frost doesn't have this in him, but like, if Morgan Frost wasn't as skilled as he was, and he had to be a role player, he probably could be. You know, like that doesn't. Like, my point is. Hathaway cannot produce at that level. That that's why he's a role player, right? But that doesn't also that doesn't take away the fact that he basically he's, played he's on the line, that stayed together for most of the season, was good on the penalty kill, good and clearly was good in the room. It seemed like they all like him. Um, yeah, it's kind of why I, I was I saying view, like with Ursa. I view Hathaway and the next guy, which is Eric Johnson, that's on the list as two like uh, some of the most important guys that played on the Flyers this year. Just because of the fact that when Whoa. you look at Hathaway Whoa. and Johnson, I don't know how but you group Johnson just, in there. just listen to what I'm going to say first. <laughs> it's more of the fact of the off-ice idea of them being the veterans and the guys that you can – like you can pick them apart and they, they know like anything. I mean they've been in the league a long time. Johnson, for example, he's been in the league since 2006. Like there's a ton there. I mean and for, for a guy like – Hathaway to say like at the end of the season that like the room was really tight and all that. And then Johnson to even say like, it was like one of the best places he ever played one of the highlights of his career. And obviously he's an ex guy, but it's tying into my point. Cause I had made a tweet about this on exit day. It's just all those little things to me. And that's why I view Hathaway as just like one of those guys that can help out with the guys in the room. And, and you know, they talk about culture and the whole thing. I don't know. That's just how I see it. And and I think Johnson is in a similar aspect. Like the amount of stuff that Johnson probably gave the guys like Forrester, guys like Brink, guys like Faraby, you know what I mean? And and like even same with Stahl, even though his play wasn't great, it's just the little, you know, veteran tips that you can get in a season. And I don't know. That's, I, 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 I think that stuff's important. I've always have. I think that's important, especially when you're trying to build a culture and, you know, get it back to, uh, you know, what the Flyers were obviously so yeah i completely agree i, I th- that's why i was saying will with like the urson i see him as like an a backup but like a c starter like I, I, the way i'm grading things is what they're it's not a matter of expectations it's a matter of like the role that they play on the team like chris was saying so like i just think that the like hathaway is the perfect guy for what the flyers need in that role and so yeah, that's yeah. why I would I would say that he's kind of in I would give him a grade of an A, um, yeah. for like the, the the course that he is taking. Well, then or my exactly. my question would be why not S then? If if we're grading based on role, because because fair because I feel like he did his S role would just be stupid. Like <laughs> okay, so I mean fair. So then I'll, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with A then. I mean if yeah, so I mean, all that, but like if I said S. I, I like I don't even know what I would think of myself. Like I, I don't. Yeah, it like might be too did. strongly worded for me. Yeah, but yeah. it would just like be if like you, if you did a ranking of every team around the league and and just did a tier list for every single one, and then you had one guy in S tier. Like imagine you go through Connor McDavid and like Leon Drysital. You know the Austin yeah, Matthews, Garnet Hathaway, Garnet Hathaway, and Hathaway. Garnet Hathaway <laughs> for the Flyers. Yeah, <laughs> like that would just like I just look like an absolute buffoon. Yeah, so that's why yeah. I think he's an A because there's, there's okay. no yeah fair I, yeah 
Uh, yeah. The next one, the next one is, I think, pretty clearly everyone is going to say yes to it. It's Travis Konechny. Well, we yeah. didn't, we didn't fully get into Eric Johnson. Let's. Uh... Oh right, you, my bad. My bad. You, Johnson, yeah, you, you gave your uh, Johnson opinion. Yeah, I, I was looking at Johnson and I meant to go Hathaway and I skipped down. God, I'm sorry, Johnson. Uh, off ice, I mean, I'm sure he brought a lot. On ice, I don't think he was anything special. I think he had he had good moments. He had he had a really good block. I forget what game it was, but he had a really good block in front of the crease to save a goal. That was a good play. But other than that, I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I give him a like a low C. It's like it's it's really not even his fault, but like every time I see him on the ice, he's just so slow. And I, and I know he's. I, I'm just like I'm just so out on Johnson. I didn't. It's not that I didn't like them like them picking him up. It was a necessity move with all the injuries. They just needed somebody to fill in. I I just I just I'm I I, I almost want to give him like a D plus, but like I think that's too harsh. It's like C I'm not. I, I think like a C minus C is probably fair. Like whatever, I'm not too, I'm not too high, too low. Like I'm, I'm not gonna like nitpick Johnson. Like he, they traded yeah. a fourth uh, round pick, a fourth round pick for him, and he played, you know, whatever. And for like, again, I think the all fight stuff's important. So like for him to say, it's one of the highlights of his career, and when the Flyers are in one yeah, of the stretches. I mean, is it really? Of course, he's going to say that, though. Like, I mean, I mean, like, I don't know. I, I, I don't think that he, you know, someone just says that. Especially, yeah, no, when, I, I don't like, think guys just go out of their way to say they, those things. Yeah, especially for a guy who just won the cup, you yeah. know. That's true. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, but then that's what I'm saying. Like, is it really the, one of the highlights of his career if he just, <laughs> I, just came out and the cup? Ask him. Like, I don't. I mean, I, I guess like I would love to. I would love to hear from him. I can and, see and what hear, he's saying like, because it's like when you look DJ, at come on the pod, let's go. <laughs> listen, he he agreed. He agreed at the carnival. Yeah, and yeah. the in that case, I am all the way in on Eric Johnson. Disregard <laughs> everything that I just said. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> no, that yeah. would be dope. Um, all right, yeah, let's, uh, let's circle back on TK. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. we're all in agreement with test here, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I don't know. I, I was no. thinking maybe an A. I would say A. No one's in S tier this year? He broke okay. his career highs. He, he broke his career highs, sure, but I mean, there was moments where he was just like, you know, like, where's TK? I don't know. Uh, well, He's been very good. I'm not saying you're going to be great every game, obviously. Like, no, there's no player that's going to be good all 82 games. I mean, just yeah. everybody has their invisible games, but I don't know. I mean, I, I just feel like that if there's any player that you can point to on the Flyers this season and say, this guy has consistently, you know, e- even through like the rough stretches, been at least been a presence on the team like it's tk yeah i, I mean yeah, I, no, definitely I last year like tk gets it like there's there's just something about him that i he's a flyer I don't think he's, a, he's such a flyer yeah. man he's yeah i don't i don't think he's a guy like you you like mold your team around obviously but he's no he's definitely a guy that should be part of it um mm-hmm. he's probably gonna get an extension i don't know at what rate but i Look, I mean, to have, you know, 33 goals and he didn't, you know, he was banged up a little bit. Um, I also think he probably played hurt towards the end of the year. Um, I could, I know, I did wonder about that, like, as the season was going on, especially with the the losing streak. You could just kind of see, like, I didn't. And, and, and look, I mean, I think that's been one of the problems with connecting his whole career is there's been times where he's been really hot and then times where he's been really cold. Um, and if that's the case, like you can kind of live with that if he's still putting up 70 points, you know what I mean? And, and like, I think as the flyers get better and as guys like, you know, obviously Mitch Cobb and if they have a healthy coots next year and, and all that too. And obviously, you know, guys like Tippett who we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think there's something there. Like, I think for me, I would go S, um, I just think he was too good not to be like i just i, I just mean, i can't i mean if, if it's s if it's a fine whatever like i just yeah he was really good i just don't think so he, he's really good i just think s is reserved for like you know the absolute like undisputed superstars who you know i mean well make, yeah but we're only talking about the flyers though i know and and but honestly i don't think there's a single player on the roster that's s tier well i'm not saying s tier well we're not talking about in general we're talking about this season yeah, I, I don't think yeah. there was a single flyer that had an S tier caliber season. Yeah, I mean, no, I get that. Yeah, so I'm I, willing I to go down. I, 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 I think there's definitely an argument for us. Yeah, 
I'm I'm comfortable either way. My personal opinion is high A. And that's only because of that little stretch where he had a little bit of a lull there. Other than that, he was S all season pretty much, but that that stretch kind of where he struggled a bit, that is what brings it down to a high A for me. But I'm comfortable. You guys think wherever. he's like the the valedictorian of of this year's Flyers, the class of twenty four? I would say so. <laughs> yeah, like like yeah. would you say he's like you know top of the class here? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, he. I mean, look, I I just I don't know. I mean, I just don't think how you know a guy who puts up seventy points on a team that like was supposed to be really bad and then like i don't know i mean i just think there's something there with that especially when you know he breaks career high and goals again oh, i mean obviously there's something there um, travis connect me but i mean yeah yeah <laughs> i think he's like, <laughs> yeah. i think we got something with this guy yeah i think we do <laughs> all right uh next one's lawton <laughs> uh, i love scott lawton he's he's like my he's he's one of my favorite like top three favorite flyers on this team um, I think he, he – I mean, it's it's kind of tough because coming into the season, he had a lot of high expectations around him. Um, you know, he had a great season last year and then kind of didn't exactly replicate that this year. But still, like, really important locker room presence. I think I'm comfortable with, like, a B-. minus. Yeah, he had some stretches where he was invisible. Like but... C, probably C plus, B-. Minus in yeah, that range. I think I'd go C. Yeah, he, he... – he, I'm actually surprised by how many points he had. Like, looking at it on paper, 39 feels a lot higher than I feel like he actually got. Um, but I, I think, think C is fair. High in goals too, off the top yeah. of my head, I believe. No, I think he had close to a 20 goal season. Yeah, well, no, last never, season he never had more than he never had more than 15. Yeah, he had 13 this year. I said 15. Yeah, no, I know. I thought you were saying that this year was his career high in goals. Yeah, I'm saying he never had more than 15, I think. No, right. last season he had 13. Had, well, yeah, he had 13. Let, no, I'm looking right here. Let, no, this had, season he had 13. Last season he yeah. had 18. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because last year he had forty three points, and everybody was like, "Whoa!" Like we might be, yeah. like Lawton might be turning a corner offensively. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, he had eighteen yeah. last year. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he kind of did. Like, this is the second best like season in terms of just pure points he put up. It is, yeah. but like, he's already at the age where it's like, is this like kind of, you know, we already. And, know and again, it just is. gets to the point where it's like, you already have Paling. Yeah, if you have Paling, why is not that I don't like Lawton? Like, I think Lawton's a good player. I think he's serviceable. I think he's a true flyer. Um, in I and out, have but... love his off ice, what he brings yeah. to, the, to the room, and yeah, I mean, he's he's so good off the ice too with with kids and and all the, the charity stuff he does like, he a lot to say all that. yeah definitely and, um, and just yeah. how much he wants to be a flyer yeah yeah and, and i'm kind of factoring that into my rating like if you're going purely on ice i would agree probably like a c plus but i think there's just what he brings off ice like bumps him up to like that b minus range yeah uh next one's lixel i'd give him a probably the same thing as added in jenning you know somewhere around a c like C yeah. minus. I think I think I would put him a little bit a. higher than those two. Um Well Adder uh, was a B, so you think he's an A? Yeah. Well, I don't think Adder should be a should be a B, but I, I'd honestly change my rating on on Adder. I think I'd probably go C. Yeah. Oh, no, I, mean, C. No, no, <laughs> I I wanted Adder to C too. I'm you know, being I'm firm good. on like a C for I I've been firm yeah. on a C for Adder, but yeah. I, I mean Yeah. I, I the way I see it, I would say Adder's a high C. Uh, Lixel's a, a med- middle C and um, Jennings a high C. C. Yeah, I would, I, I would switch. Did you say what flavor of high C? C. I've never had a high C before, to be honest with you. you. What? What? Yeah, I've never had a high C. Whoa, 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 whoa. Brother, You've what? never had high C before? Uh, maybe like once when I was a real little kid, but I, I didn't know there were multiple flavors until this moment. Dude. Never had the fruit punch? The orange vanilla? <laughs> Oh yeah, you guys remember those things in the barrels? Huggies? Yeah, the are those yeah. the with the, yeah, okay, like the blue ones? The huggies. Yep. Yeah. I never had yeah. those either. Oh, I man. was such a huggies and fig newtons kid. <laughs> That's good. Anyway, <laughs> uh, next one. <laughs> <laughs> next next one's playing. 
Um, B. I think B. I'd go a, a low A, high B. Yeah. I, I could see him. Say, I'd say A minus. Yeah. I like feeling a lot. I wouldn't put him up to an A. I, I don't B know. Plus. I think you could make the argument. There's an that, argument. I mean, he, well, he burst I mean, onto the scene. You're saying B plus, though. There's an argument. That's why there's an argument for A minus. Like... <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you might as well just Hell, I mean, give it a little <laughs> Right, give it a little when, bump. <laughs> when Briere signed Paling in the offseason, I feel like people just kind of saw it as like, all right, you know, it's another like reclamation project. Probably won't really go anywhere, but, you know, it's worth a try, right? That's he essentially thought, revived right? his career here. Oh, absolutely. Like, Paling's like a – I don't even like think it's essentially – He did franchise mode legend. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he came like in. He's like an NHL franchise mode legend where, like, he's just one of those guys you can, like, pick up off of waivers for nothing and <laughs> hopefully he turns into, like, an 82 overall. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. like, yeah, no, I, I think it's been a very successful experiment with Paling. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we, we kind of have compared him. Some would call him a poor man, Scott Lawton. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that was quite the <laughs> label for him. Yeah, but, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. I, mean that, I don't think it's entirely inaccurate. I think he's been really yeah. effective. I, hopefully he can replicate that next season. Yeah. 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 B plus. Oh, for sure. So um, we got two B's and is that two A's? I mean, all our yeah. ratings are all over the place. So, like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, but yeah. What, what do we land at here for the. I, I, I've been, I, I'd go yeah. A. I feel like we landed a B. My, my thought is like Hathaway and A, I can get behind because Hathaway brought that physical element. I think Paling was just as impressive production so wise, but he didn't bring the physical <laughs> element. That Hathaway right, it's did not the same player though. It's not the well, same yeah, but, role. But then if then what role did he bring? Well, like, if if Hathaway brings the physicality, Paling brings the speed. That scoring like, bottom six presence is what yeah, Paling yeah. brings. But but he didn't like, bring the scoring scoring. presence even like a ton better than Hathaway did. That's why I'm saying I mean, Hathaway's not a scoring presence though. But like I mean, all right. I feel like okay, I think Hathaway's, Hathaway's like that, that checking yeah. that checking depth and paling. The, the best yeah, points. He had, he had eleven more points than than uh, Hathaway. Yeah. The best way I can I can describe this to you is if Philadelphia Flyers if, players like, were Pokemon. Yeah, like, yeah, I, mean, right, I want to hear I want to hear this. I want to hear Paul. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> so, so if if the Flyers roster was a shit ton of Pokemon, right? Garnet Hathaway is a fire type. And Ryan Paling's a water type. Ryan Paling's that smooth skater. He's you know he's he's quick with it. He's quick on his feet. Garnet Hathaway's the fire kind of like you know in your face, physicality, aggression. Oh, that's good. They both play the roles really you nice. Really thought about They're this for players. Yeah, I just <laughs> yeah. pulled it out my ass right there. That's good. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I look. If we're arguing like what each one of them bring, if it's Paling Hathaway, like if Hathaway brings physicality. Which fine, he he does do that. Then Paling brings just as much speed, like outside of Tippett, he's probably the what maybe second, third fastest forward on the team. Like he's he's I think fast. Yeah, up probably there, but second. I mean, he's not gonna be on the roster anymore. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah, fucking Gurion yeah. with four games. I'm yeah. talking about guys who are gonna be here. Like he's yeah. probably yeah, like definitely. So I don't know. I mean, I I think for a guy to again. To come here and revive his career here, of all places, with Torts as coach, uh, I think that's there's something to be said about that. Uh, next guy's Risto. Come on, boys, let's give an F. F really? I thought he had a pretty. I mean, it, well, I first of all, we go, really like, based on their own standards him for God. Well, that's not really his fault, but still. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I didn't I think he was great. Like, I thought Risto standards. I didn't think so either. Season. But he's still. No. I mean, no, he's not like phenomenal. Where he's he was, like, the last and, and I wasn't. Jo- I wasn't being serious when I said that. I was just joking. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, we're still like. I don't know. Like uh, D. I mean, he wasn't great. He only, he only had four points in thirty-one games. Yeah, I would yeah, say D. I, mean, I think defensively, he's he was like a lot better. He he, he improved his like you know, defensive side of the game so much that like mm-hmm. we were talking about, oh my God, we might be able to offload his contract <laughs> at the trade deadline yeah. and then he got injured. So, I mean, yeah. I think that if you're going to go D, it should be a high D, but yeah, I, I, I think that, I think that he really kind of had a, he, he had a great year for Risto. <laughs> yeah. Which tops out at like a maximum really? of C. Yeah. Like because like, of C. 
I mean, Rizzo literally revived his NHL career last season. So I don't That's know. That's what I was going to say. His great like, year for Rizzo was last yeah, year. Yeah, like that was last year. He yeah. wasn't even just like no, that. I, mean, I wouldn't even year. say it was last year. That was like his career season. Yeah, last yeah. year wasn't yeah. even like. was like in Buffalo. Like, yeah. But last I think year I can wasn't even like a career year for Risto. It was, I, it was I don't, I don't, for any defenseman. That was like a, it was a legitimately impressive defensive year. Like, regardless of Risto. Like, he was the best defenseman on the team from Christmas on last season. Yeah. I mean, Hands down. Hands well, down. Well, I forget, I, I forget how York played in the second half of last season. Was he pretty impressive? He was, he was, yeah, York was very good. But I thought it was either York or Risto, everyone said. Yeah. I said Risto. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I feel like Risto, I feel like I give him a C. Owen talked me into it a bit on the low end of C, though. <laughs> I feel like. I feel like because Owen it was a wide, I, I didn't even say C. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just said yeah. like his, Risto's ceiling, like over the course of being Risto, is like a C on, on any given night. <laughs> I, I, I feel like he, D plus. Yeah, I, I feel like we're kind of forgetting because it was thirty games in like I feel like the most forgettable part of the season. I feel like he was pretty fine defensively. Um, I mean, again, it didn't last super long with. Um, whatever, but like, I, I, I would say that, yeah, probably C for me, but low end of that. Yeah. Like I have a Sanheim. Plus C minus. Sanheim. I loved this season at Sanheim. Sanheim I'm so was glad we're on Sanheim. Good. Yeah. He really came alive. He came forward as like a guy that can really step up as a leader on the team. I'm, I'm really happy with Sanheim's season. I'm tempted to give him an A. I would go B. I, I think. He started off really good offensively. Um, I I still think that you know he has more to offer than maybe we thought originally, but uh, he was a minus twenty, so you know defense still needs some work. But he's definitely made. A You're ton kidding? Of strides. No, I'm not. There's no way you just made. You just said that he needs work defensively because he's fucking minus twenty. That's not the only reason. Everybody on this team was you know more, more, most players were minuses, but I mean. It's. I was just. Dude, York was minus thirteen. Yeah, it's a stat, and it's a, it's a very Dude, skewed it's, stat. It's a flawed stat. I think it's. Yeah, it's a very skewed stat. I think I think it's a fair point that his his defensive game still has some warts, but I think it's miles better than what it has been. Yeah, yeah miles no, better. Hundred percent. What I liked the most about Sanheim was, I think, more of the fact of him constantly joining the rush. Um, mm-hmm. I liked the way he would just gallop in the neutral zone and use his legs and. Just he's a good skater. I, I think when Sandheim plays with confidence, he's good. And I I really like that that Sandheim and York pairing. Like that's probably the best pairing of the year. Um I think in the future I'd be fine if they tried that. And I also did like the Sealer Drysdale. That's a different conversation for another day. But the the Sandheim York, that was good. I, I like that. Um I'd say yeah. I guess I'm a B. I think he was slightly carried by York in like kind of the shadows a bit. Um, but high high B though for sure. Sam had a great year. It's a shame he couldn't keep up how he started. But um, yeah. All right, we got a couple left. Uh, Sealer. I love hey. Sealer this year. Hey. Yeah, I think it's yeah. A. Hands hey. down, A. He's yeah. like the heart and soul of that defensive core. And then, yeah. wait, and then the next one, Stall. What's that? Next one is Stall. <laughs> Um. <laughs> All right, ready? Everyone say it with me. Three, two, one, F. Uh, <laughs> C. I said a D. Oh, oh D. You said B. I was <laughs> on the computer, dude. No, I, dude. Yeah, oh, I'm all the way out on Mark nah. Stahl. Yeah. No, I'm not all the way out. Unless he wants had... to be on the podcast, in which case I love that. That's very true. <laughs> yeah, that in that case, he's an A. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't know. He had moments. I don't think he was I, all terrible. Yeah. But. I mean, you know, at, at the same time, he's just Mark Stahl. Like, there's yeah. just, it's just not much to say. <laughs> yeah. At, at, I didn't like it when they picked him up and yeah, still I, don't like it. I can't. I don't even know, dude. Like, I can't. I can't even. I can't even try to. I, I, I can't. I can't even try to think of one good thing he did. Like, outside of the off the ice thing that I've mentioned, which I think is important. On the ice, he was dreadful. 
Like you don't remember in the beginning of the season against the Islanders when he just, had that back to back sequence of like an absolute beach ball of a turnover and yes. then the ridiculous dive. Ju- right just after. as bad as Keith Yandel. Like yeah, but not, it, it was not, like polar not, opposite, like, like great yeah. and terrible. And it wasn't. And Yandel, I don't think would have been as bad if the Flyers weren't that shit that season. You know what I mean? Fair. That's fair. Like Stall was god awful. Um. And Yandel, Yandel's the worst. That's the worst performance I've ever seen by a defenseman in a Flyers uniform. Ever. Ever. Of all time. All time. There, <laughs> there is nothing, nothing. Didn't exactly have Ever top how bad that was. It, yeah. it is insane. Uh, next one's Tippett. A. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say A, too. I mean, I want to go end of I'm A. Trying to, I'm That's trying to end. like talk myself into an A right now. I'm at Very like a B plus, but what did we say? Fiery was that a B? I think we said Fiery was like a B C. I'd say Tippett Ooh. was probably a B plus. B. You might be right because there were yeah. a lot of stretches where he was kind of just dude. He went. It was nowhere. fucking ice cold if, at if the end of the year. If yeah. you put up like a very few more goals. and like, and if we want to, if you yeah. want to say like Konechny disappeared and Farabee disappeared and Frost at the, you have to say the same thing for yeah. Tippin because it Absolutely. happened. Yeah. yeah no, when I when I started and, writing and my this is not a knock at Tippin at all, I don't want to cut you off, but yeah. this is not a knock at Tippin at all because yeah. I love Tippin. I think he's great. Oh yeah. Um, when I but, when I started writing my Tippin article shortly after his extension. Um, he was on pace for 34 goals. He now is at 28, which I believe is just one more than he had last season. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I can get behind a B. At initial thought, I was thinking A, but yeah, B. Yeah, no, you're right. He, he's definitely very hot and cold, very streaky scorer. Um, and he, he doesn't really do a ton outside of his offensive game, which is fine. But that just means that when he's off, he's not going to be as noticeable. So yeah, yeah I, can get behind a B. I, mean, I don't know if I agree with that entirely because i think i do think there's something there with Tippett defensively where he could get better in that i kind of view him right oh, now as like sure, I did. he's not like a defensive guy i mean no clearly yeah. um i i think i think there's something like i remember years ago i used to kind of say the same thing about connecty and it was around like 2018 19 where it was like you saw the offensive you know surges and stuff and you saw how good he could be with some of the high-end guys but defensively he was god awful and that's how i view Tippett now where not that i think he's awful i think there's he's definitely not he's not horrible at it but he definitely could work on it um and i, I just think there's time there's a lot of times where i still find him struggling to find space um so that's and then yeah that's that's probably all i have on Tippett. like probably a b probably b plus it's probably around where i'd i'd kind of go with him uh, the last two, I'll, I'll throw them. I'll throw them both at you since we've been going at this kind of long. Uh, York and then Zamula. York, York. easy A. Yeah, yeah. York is also an easy A. Yeah. Zamula, I'd go B. I go B's with Z too. Yeah, I, I like Zamula to B. Mm-hmm. I think that I mean he he's been really impressive for me this year. I didn't honestly didn't expect much at all from him, and and the fact a, that he came in on the power play and everything too. Yeah, yeah, that which was really surprising to me that he that he, he had the second sell in the season. Play. Little Yager slew action. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and then York just kind of like saying I'm taking a big step up. I can see those two kind of being the yeah the one and two of the team yeah. going forward. York one in the uh, Barry Ashby. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. awesome. Can I be honest? I think York is the next cl- or is the behind TK next closest to S this season. I, I, can, agree with that. I can get behind that. Yeah. Like I, 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 I think like York is definitely too. an A, but York was fantastic, and I think is largely why Sanheim was able to do any of what he did this season. Um I, I, I wouldn't say it's York, the largely I don't the think reason. It's like but... a solely like if this guy had a good season, it's because of that player. Well, not not like directly one to one, but every time Sanheim was doing Sanheim stuff in the offensive zone, York backed it up and saved a lot of big mistakes. And, and it's a very York good thing that those solid defensively, and he put up thirty points, which is not. Yeah, but I, I, yeah. I just think that's a good pair, though. I don't think that's something yeah. you can like negatively take away from the other guy. Because you could say the same thing about, like, for example, if it was like Provorov Niskanen a couple years ago, where it was like Provorov was able to, you know, flee more in the offense because Niskanen was always back. Well, but I think, I think, 
York I, I, said I, I was a little offense. Bit real, but I know it's probably a bad analogy. But fair. I, I think York sacrificed offense because he was playing with Sandheim. And that's why I think that like Yeah, but I York's offense was actually up this year. It was, but Which I still is... think he was sacrificing some offense just because of he was playing with Sandheim. That's why that's why I'm, that's my thought on it. Mm. But yeah, I mean, I could see it. I just think for me, like, I view York as probably the, the future 1D. Um, even though it's kind of harder to even say that now because you have Drysdale too, which that's exciting to even think about. But um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think for me, I view, I view York, I think, a little differently, more so than the, the fact that I honestly liked the way he moved the puck up the ice. I thought was much more improved. Um, I think in some of the other areas of like stick positioning and retrieving pucks and stuff like that, like he was like he was good at that um, before, and obviously he's had the natural talent for it. But even like just this season, and but I also do think it's it's like I I just don't think you can take away from Sanheim just because of York. And same, like, vice versa. Like, you can't add to Sanheim because of York either. Like, it, I think it was just a good pairing in general. Like, they were both, you know, B, A category. So, like, I think it's just, like, a compliment of, of the both of them, to be honest. Yeah. Yep. And then we're all fair with some we'll add B. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it, boys. That's 28 guys. That's 28 rankings. Uh, I'm sure everybody in the comments will tell us about how dumb we are. But, uh... Yeah, any uh, final thoughts? I think we yeah, did just, good. Yeah, I, I, I thought this was a lot of fun. Um, everybody out there listening, keep an eye out on, on our Twitter. We're going to post the full uh, the full tier list that we kind of, with all of our kind of average dancers up on the 4 Fly Guys Twitter account. So you can kind of review that. Maybe go in, make your own tier list to tell us why we're wrong. Uh, questions. This one comes from Soda Man on Discord. He said, Goalie Tandem looks like Fedotov and Urson for next season. With not as much experience on the back end, do we finish better or worse than this year in the standings? Yeah, I, I think I think it's kind of hard to make a, a playoff case for, team. What's that? I think they're a playoff team. No shot. I think they take a. Slight I know we step said back. that. I know we said that. Yeah, slight setback. My thoughts exactly. Like, yeah. I just think. I just, I don't know. I I just it think it's the deal. I just think that like the goaltending situation is such a is such a big minus. Um, I mean, I mentioned like in in the uh, in the article where I, I kind of gave a little bit of optimism before the Flyers ended up ultimately missing the playoffs. Like losing Hart was such like a necessary catastrophe for for the Flyers. Like j- not just like this season, but like going forward. Like that's going to be such a that's, that's going to be such like a big like blow to to like you know their success going forward. So I I just think. I mean, we'll, we'll see what Fedotov can do. Um, I mean, like like we said, like you know, excited to see what what he can do with like a full you know training camp under him. But I just don't see I I see the goaltending situation really impacting where they land, and I think it's going to be significantly lower. Like I think they're going to be battling it out with like the Blue Jackets for last in the Metro next season. Really, I don't think it'll yeah. be that bad. I think it'll. I definitely see a, a slight step backwards, but I can still see them finishing probably like six to seven in the metro and i think maybe somewhere in the 10 to 14 I, range i, I mean do you, where I just going through the metro like who do you think they're better than other than the blue jackets the well, islanders the metro blows, have been so, so unimpressive I, the metro the, yeah. the, the caps have been so unimpressive in the, too, play, I mean. the islanders are in the playoffs because they were the best out of all the other teams that sucked yeah i'm kind of say the islanders are a playoff team or yeah you know, like I can see Patrick Wild like leading them to a successful season next year. I, I don't see I, it with that roster. They're way too old. Their their defense is god awful. He's not even starting Sorokin right now, and they're down two nothing, and they blew that game last night horrifically. Um, that was so funny. Oh my god, that was hilarious to watch. <laughs> yeah, but like uh, I, not to quote like you know the trolls on Twitter. When do the Flyers play tomorrow? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, and like, I, I just I know what you're like, saying, but like, are we gonna, you're gonna argue the Islanders are a good team? I I think they're better than one the Flyers. Four, oh my god, okay, one of those nah. fucking teams in hockey to watch. <laughs> like, I mean, just like, un- incredibly boring. Like, there's nothing. 
They're I, they're I, less boring than they have been under Trotz though. Like I tweeted that out the other day. Like obviously that was before they ended up blowing the lead, but like it's a more exciting yeah. team to watch than it has been in years past. I mean, they beat the Flyers in the bubble. It's hard they were for me more to exciting. Say, like, yeah, they were deeper. They had more depth. Like they were just like they, they were still boring. Don't get me wrong. They were skill. more exciting in the bubble yeah. than they are now. They were they were a better team in the bubble. Yeah, than they, are they now, had they like, had Everly. Varlamov was hot as hell. Like their defense was still good. They had a really good Nicoletti that year. He was incredible for them. Um, I, yeah, the, the way I see the Metro, it's going to be like Carolina, the Rangers, and like some other kind of. It's going to be like mid team in the same third spot. Thing. I think it's genuinely going to be pretty much the exact same thing as this year, where no I one's going to be able to get that spot. I that's think that third spot. I'd be shocked. If... I think the Islanders take a step back. Um, I think you could, and I, I should, I should, I should go away from that. I think. I think you could also say Jersey's going to have a bounce back season. Yeah, yeah. Um, you could throw them in the mix, but I don't think it's going to be like a landslide or anything. I, th- I think it's going to be tight for most of the year, and I think that's that's. I'm not saying it's gonna. I'm not saying that they're significantly worse worse than the Islanders. I just think that they are worse than the Islanders. Yeah, I think the clear. I think the clear top four for the Metro would be Rangers, Canes, Devils, and I would even say Penguins. I wouldn't be shocked if they fire if they fire Mike Sullivan and get a new coach in there, and that helps. I mean, they're probably Sullivan and that coaching carousel of all the guys that could go to some other teams. True, but like. Is Sullivan gone? Like, is that for sure? Uh, I mean, it's not for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised. Imagine it'll be Sullivan, Woodcroft, all that. I mean, Lindy Ruff just got hired by Buffalo. Like, there's a lot of other ones. Yeah, I I just Um, I'm I'm on the train of like I don't bet against Sidney Crosby, so I can see them just like somehow making their way. Like the Penguins, like the Penguins could survive a nuclear blast and still be playing playoff hockey. Pittsburgh is in like year two of like a five to ten year ish window of just being horrific. Like, I, I think, think they're not quite there yet, but they'll be close. My my one of the stories you guys haven't mentioned is the Caps. Honestly, I think the most likely team to be maybe worse than the Flyers next season in the Metro is the Caps. I see it more likely that the Blue Jackets take a step up, which granted, I've been betting on a Blue Jackets step up for three years, and they have do everything in their power every year to prove me everyone's wrong. Everyone's been debating. Everyone's been hoping for that since 2000. I slowly begin to hate the Blue Jackets because every year I'm like, oh, maybe they'll be like a almost a wild card team. And every year they yeah. make me look like an idiot. They've always been the worst. Like the, the one year they were really in that wild card. Worst. Like Sorry, they've guys. had basically one good season in in the NHL, and it who was, was the coach for the who was the coach for that season. Oh wow, it was Torts. Is that the oh, one? One thing he's done in twenty fucking. Oh yeah, because that, that was when he won yeah, the. There you go. The Jack Adams Columbus. Columbus. There you go. The the one miracle sweep he had <laughs> in Tampa Bay, and then what happened the next round? They lost in six to the better team in Boston. Didn't he win the Jack Adams in Columbus too? Uh, yeah, in sixteen did. seventeen, yeah. he did. And they were also a first round exit in five games. <laughs> was that the Penguins? Just saying. Yes, that was the Stanley Cup champion Penguins. That was when Bobrov- Bobrovsky had a pretty solid year. I mean, that's, that's the, that year. That, yeah, that's the year that got him that that bag in a. Cam Atkins had thirty five goals that season. <laughs> oh my god! Leading scorer. It all comes full circle. I think it was sixty five yeah. points. It's insane. You know who else yeah. was on that team? Lucas Sedlak. Yep. Wow. He made his Flyers made his legend debut that year. Yep, <laughs> Flyers legend did mid season. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So to answer whoever – I forgot the name of their question. Um, clearly, we have no idea. We're all <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. He's been going on top of for the best 10 minutes. Yeah, to, yeah. to answer to uh, man, we have no clue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I um, feel like we all think pretty similar with some variation of a little better or a little worse. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, this one comes from Sodaman as well. He said, "What prospects do you expect to make a push for the roster next season? Uh, who has higher stock now and who has fallen out of favor?" Samu I Tuomala. Think, uh, yeah, Tuomala could make a push. I don't know. I mean, I think Briere made it pretty clear in his uh, his you know kind of end of season presser that he thinks Samu needs a little bit more time, which yeah, I don't have sure. a problem with, but. At yeah. the same time, like I think people were saying that about Brink before this season. So yeah. he could come out of nowhere and have a really good camp and, you know, 
earn a look right out of training camp and you know get get the start on the opening light lineup i'm not saying he would stick there i mean andre made it out of camp and then you know you saw him kind of fall off after four games and he got sent back down and never came back up so it could be another situation like that i mean i don't know i think sam was always a, a solid bet considering he's one of the best phantoms right now but at the same time i think it wouldn't be surprising if adder maybe stayed up and started a couple games i, I think uh yeah, I would say probably either Adder or Tuamala or maybe a complete think, dark horse. I think Andre is in the mix. Andre too, yep. Yeah. Andre has to be in the mix just where he is in his career. I think he's played well with the Phantoms. I don't see why he wouldn't be in the mix either. But I was thinking maybe a dark horse like, uh, I mean, I know he's not necessarily a prospect, but Adam Brooks, I think he could be a guy that maybe makes a push. He almost made it a couple years ago. Yeah. Most made his four C out of camp, mm-hmm. and that was only really because of an Isamov got hurt. But yep. I mean, just looking at like the position where you can see somebody kind of coming up, like where there's going to be the most vacancy going into next season, it's probably defense. So I, I think I'm on the Andre Adder train there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, um, well, to the answer real quick, I'm falling out of favor. I mean, we all seen Denoye. He's been kind of. Majorly down from where yeah. he was last season. He does have two of those best four games, but wisdom, yeah. yeah. I was really yeah. hoping Zade Wisdom would kind of take a step. Out. I mean, I've been hoping for it for a couple of years, and just yeah. I think the other guy is an issue there. Another guy who could have a shot is Lixell because he was already up here mm-hmm. and he's been one of the best phantoms all year. But yeah. um, I do agree with that with Wisdom and with Denoye. Denoye does have two goals in his last two games. Say Kolosov. I don't think Kolosov has a chance. Just the Fedotov, the, if not for Fedotov, yeah. I would say he absolutely has a, a big chance. But I think well, with I mean, Fedotov... He, he it's, roll out of camp. I mean, yeah, if he out, I just, if he outplays him. Because it's interesting. Like, like they're going to have four, There's four goalies on, on contract now. And then you have, you have to throw into the mix that at least one of them is not going to play a ton in the preseason. And there's only going to be six or seven preseason games. Plus the rookie games, so there's maybe eight, nine games to start the year, depending on who plays in your rookie games. And that's not going to be, you know, everyone. So, like, I don't know. Yeah. I think Kolosov plays games, obviously, just in the event of injuries and whatever. I don't know that I... I I just think they're going to, from the beginning, be, like, respecting of his game, but similar to Samu Tumala, where they're going to be, like, you did really good, um, but like you're, we want you on the Phantoms type thing. Um, that that's my thought, to be honest. Um, yeah, hopefully Kolosov can, regardless, though, look good on the Phantoms. All right, uh, thanks everybody again for all the support as always. Uh, make sure to obviously follow. All of us, uh, Four Fly Guys on Twitter. Um, any uh, any of you guys got any uh, other content coming out? Uh, top 10 of the NHL draft article. Um, putting the finishing touches on that. That should be coming out sometime this week. Um, now that the Flyers are fully out of the playoffs, got some exciting stuff to look forward to there. Um, currently have to work around some of that list, though. I think I have some players moving, though, so I got to – do some reworking of that. But yeah, that should be out sometime soon. Anyone else? Um, just want to quickly say, um, make sure you join our Discord. A lot of fun stuff going on there. I know there's yep. no games going on, um, but, you know, we're, we're going to be getting together for the draft, for the Phantoms. Um, going to be a lot of fun. Um, you know, we take we take questions from there. Both our questions, obviously, today came from Discord. So um, if you want a chance to be featured on the pod and have your question, uh, or have us answer your questions, make sure you join the Discord. Yep, for sure. Yep. And then just last thing for me, I have a uh, sometime in the near future going to have a an article coming out on kind of the players that were traded over the offseason and how their seasons, their first seasons under new organizations fared. Uh, kind of a work in progress because the playoffs are still going on, but, you know, it's it's mostly going to be the guys that uh, 
did not end up making any runs. But, you know, with Tony and a couple other guys in the playoffs still, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. But, yeah, that's, cool. that's about it for me. Sweet. Yeah, and then, I mean, for me, like, I've been working on some stuff for Heritage still. Um, got some other stuff in the mix with, obviously, the Phantoms coming up and then uh, some other stuff with a former Flyer. So we'll see how that goes. So, uh, yeah, thanks, everybody, again, for all support, as always. Uh, make sure to obviously check out Mayor Media and all the things that we do. And we'll talk to you guys all again next episode. See you guys.